All right, this is the Luck Fox Pico Mini B, and I got two of these, <clears throat> and I'm going to install them into my couple of PlayStation 4s I have. I have a PS4 Pro and a PS4 Slim. First, I'm going to do the Slim. So this is, is a little device that's going to trigger a, an exploit. Uh, once the PlayStation boots, it's going to do the exploit um, exploit via the Ethernet port. But um, instead of having everything you know plugged in on the outside of the PlayStation, I'm going to install it internally. Um, and just therefore, you know, don't have to deal with plugging things in and taking up a USB port and also the Ethernet port on the back. So it should be fun. All right, so I want to give credit to um, Modded Warfare on YouTube. Um, it's where I found the video about how to do this mod. Um, I actually haven't taken apart a PS4 uh, Slim before, so let's see how this goes. So it looks like T8 fix, fits there. Well, got the hard drive out. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. Okay, comes all the way off. That's dusty. Clean that up. Okay, so I need to get to the bottom of the Ethernet port. Pops right off. Well, finally got that off. Okay, there's the Ethernet port. Okay, the Ethernet port is right there. All right, so on the video that I watched from Modded Warfare about doing this, um, it showed, uh, I think it was a regular PS4 or a PS4 Pro or something, I'm not sure, but it wasn't a PS4 Slim. And the Ethernet pinout looks a little bit different, the arrangement of these points. So I used an Ethernet cable in the multimeter and I found out which, which pins correspond to which. And basically, you only need four points, and it's kind of, um, the only difference really is this, you can imagine this point, we're higher up, then you could easily tell, um, based on the, on his video, which pins you need to use. So, but to make it more clear, okay, so this is the pin that's TXD+, plus. this one's TXD-, minus. Uh, this is RxD plus, and this is RxD minus right here. All right, so I was looking for a while to find a spot for this, but I think I found a decent spot for it. Right here on the slim. It's not touching anything, and it it's tight, but it, uh, it fits in there. Didn't get smashed when I closed it up, and you could still access the USB right here too, which would be nice. This is the closest USB port, so I'm going to use this for uh, power and ground connections. Uh, so we have ground right there and power right here. So this is the ground.
Okay, that's on there. I don't like how that looks. Okay, that's much better. I think I'm just going to use um, magnet wire for the for the other ones. Now, how am I going to get this routed out of here? It has this uh, metal plate blocking everything. Trying to find a way to route this wire. I should probably change out the thermal paste on this thing. It has a few points I need to get ready here. And then ground and then V bus up here. Okay, I'm gonna change the thermal pace off camera. All right, so I already programmed the um, the luck fox, and I just want to show you where I want to put everything. So I'm gonna put it right here with uh, some tape or hot glue or something i don't know and the wires from the ethernet port are coming out under here these four wires going along here and they're going to wire up to it right there and then um the other two wires are coming out the red and black uh right here just where this connector is so and they connect right there and that should all fit nicely. Okay, time to get some of these soldered on here. Okay, one down. Okay, last one.
Okay, now for the power and ground. I guess I'll do ground first. Okay, good to go. Now I just gotta position it, reconnect everything, screw in a million screws, and test it out. All right, here's what it looks like. I uh, think it looks all right. I mean, hot glue doesn't look great, but whatever, it should keep in place and keep it from touching anything else. All right, so this should be the moment of truth. Um, I noticed actually that there was some bending going on here where the chip is. And so I had to break off um, a little piece of plastic and shave it down so that uh, that wouldn't happen. So it fits a little bit better. And now the, the drive looks straight, so it's not bent out of shape. All right, um, let's get power and HDMI. Okay, power. Okay, and I have a controller. Okay, I'm gonna switch the input. Uh, here we go. Okay, turn it on with the controller. So it should show network disconnecting and a couple times it should take like, I don't know, it could take like five minutes or something, I think. And then you should see a luck fox uh, and gold hen on the top left. Too many USB devices connected. Hmm. Don't know about that one. So I'm just waiting for... Let me make sure I have my network settings correct. Uh, this should be... I don't know if it matters actually with the way I set it up, but I'm just going to do it anyway. DNS automatic, MTU automatic. Do not use... Well, that's not a good sign. Hey, at least it boots. Doesn't look good. Okay, open it up and see what's wrong. Okay, I wanted to show you that it looks like it's working now. And all I did was, yep, there we go. PP pwned. Payload not found. Okay, I guess I didn't put the file on there correctly. But that's crazy because all I did was open up the PlayStation. I was gonna check to see five volts was connected. So maybe I have a loose connection, I guess. Also, I have to figure out that payload file. There you go. I already see gold hand up there. Successfully transferred, nice. So the first time you have to have the USB plugged in. Something I didn't realize. Okay, I just wanted to show you I found a much better spot. It just moved it a little bit. Now, you don't have to worry about cutting plastic, it just tucks in under there. And I wrapped it in Kapton tape, so it doesn't short against anything. Okay, so I was having some troubles, and it was working intermittently, and I found out that I was pinching the wires I was using uh, because of the way the shielding blocks over the USB ports. So um, I am going to install a wire to a different spot. I'm going to use 5 volts from uh, right here and ground, I'll just take from there.
All right, I've got the system back together. Finally, everything seems to be good and working. So let's switch it over. And wait for the exploit to run. I'm just gonna pause it and come back. All right, there it goes. Successfully exploited. And the lock disappeared on the games. Launch Red Dead. There it goes, awesome.